Welcome back. And uh, I was going to make a point about some of the uh, several reports that we've seen, how they tell you that military persons who have been dismissed were leading different gangs and different groups. But, you know, the thing about this kidnapping is that um, people just never really know that you may have been reading it in the dailies or heard it happen to somebody. Nobody knows who the next target can or could be. But from, let me see, uh, do you think that we're helpless in this case? We are not helpless. Uh, all it just requires for you to be very conscious of your environment. People need to be involved. We cannot be helpless and uh, we need to assist the police. Because How? police is the uh, body statutory charged with maintenance of internal security. And there's no community or local government where you don't have a police formation. In some local government, you have them as many as 10, 20. So we need to volunteer information. But what do you do like when a, people think that? The police don't, they don't see the authorities empowering the police to improve their capacity because everybody knows that the police is seriously challenged. Yeah, I agree. Police is seriously challenged. But you also recall what I said before. If not for the upgrade of their technical intelligence efforts, they wouldn't have made this a uh, success. And I think in the past one year, the police, the Inspector General of Police, have been trying to upgrade this uh, intelligence effort because intelligence is the key word. So what do you do or what do we do about maybe retired police or dismissed police officers or seven police officers, the same thing for military persons or whichever ones, whichever agency, being accomplices or even leading some of these groups and gangs. What do we do about that? You see, the problem is, myself for instance, I left the service after 35 years. And I believe that this country has contributed a lot in bringing me up. I'm not 70 yet, but I spent half, more than half of my life serving this country. So I wouldn't want to get anything to stain my name. Some people left in different circumstances, out of frustration. They are pushed to the society. And there is no conscious effort on part of government or all those agencies to monitor the activities of those people who right. left in frustration. Some people are not ready to go. Just because of one mistake or the other, they are dismissed. And they are dismissed. What do you expect them to do? I'm not just finding the action, though. But what they now do is take to crime. They are human beings. They are Nigerians. Times are really hard. But they can be arrested, for instance, and then of charged, course, charged, charged, charged the the court. Of course, they are arrested. They are charged. But we are talking of charging to court. Look at this decision now, this uh, event. What happens to it next? Tell us, so what do you think is going to happen? But after this celebration now, do you think we'll end? You mean you swept under the carpet? Of course. The police will make conscious efforts to sanitize the society. But you go to the judiciary, the, 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 the clocks in the judicial process. Next thing you will now hear, the man is charged to court, he, he asks for bail, is yeah. possibly granted bail, and the case will drag on and on and on for years. So I would rather suggest that or you see, since kidnapping is a very big security challenge in this country, we need to amend our laws. Just like we have the electoral laws. Give a timeline within which such cases are tried and brought to a conclusion. I think that will serve as deterrent. In most states now, there are specific laws, death penalty and all these things, even though death penalty might not actually serve as a complete deterrent. In Anambra, for instance, if you are caught, your house, your property, everything is destroyed. So it will also discourage people that your investment, you lose your investment if you are, you are convicted. But this, we need to look at our laws to ensure that this long-term trials of 10, 15, 20 years with such 
serious cases. Mm. Okay, let, let's let's wind down with some advice uh, from you because you know before, uh, unfortunately, you were kidnapped and thankfully you uh, came out alive. Your views changed uh, in terms of what members of society should do. What do you think we should be doing to also ensure that we contribute to not just being security conscious but helping to improve the situation? The situation is that everybody is a target. Nobody is exempted. So, apart from being conscious, you must observe some security tips. Like people going to parties. I don't see, I don't see why I should go to parties and start spraying money. You give out yourself in such a situation. Your bank transactions, people living in affluence, buying luxurious big cars. I mean, Wow, does that mean that people's mm. lives will change of because course. of that? Yeah. Look, I tell you, for instance, I don't travel with my Jeep anymore. Uh, mm. Okay. So, so for, for well, your well, phone, uh, for your phone now, when you when some of the transactions you have in your phone, your phone, you, you delete your transactions, them. you delete them. You delete, you delete them. If, if you cannot uh, have a way of locking them up which, you, of course, they will also ask you to open. <laughs> because in my own case, they will ask me to open my... I use my thumbprint mm -hmm. to open my iPad. So I must open it for them. Otherwise, you are dead. Makwe. So you must change your lifestyle. Mm. Wow, Times are really hard. You must change your lifestyle. Let's get Makwe's question in. Well, just quickly, I know we're already wrapping up. What is the role of debriefing? Because by now, I mean, one would have thought that with all the testimonies that we have uh, received from people who have been freed from the den of kidnappers, shouldn't we have been able to unravel some things by now? Well, I think uh, we, uh, it, the, the people being arrested are just the foot soldiers. They are not the real campaigns. But with this major success on the Evans, I think we should be able to it, it should be properly debriefed, it should be interrogated, then the, the victim that escaped should also be debriefed properly to know how they operate. And I am sure it was a, as a result of that escape that he was able to lead people to, to, yeah. to the place where they, they, are, they, they are kept. So I think that plays a, a, a big role. Like in my own case, when I feel I had to discuss with the various security agents on my observation, some of which I cannot even discuss on air. Okay, do we? Okay, so then, if you, if one suspects, for instance, I mean, if you have a neighbor who, uh, this man was said to have lived in Magodo, which, uh, well, I know pretty well, with very high fences, and perhaps you maybe you get to say hello to your neighbor and think you have any suspicions as to the kind of work he, he does or he, she does, what would you advise someone to do in that instance? There's no way you can know if somebody has uh, put up his fence than... Uh, you, you don't have access to him. Even in Abuja, in my Tamil area, Sokoro, you don't know your de next door neighbor. So people should also try and form neighborhood boards, discuss the security in your areas. What do you do? Ask questions. Know yourselves. It's very important. So we need to do that to know where people, I mean, people living around you, you don't know what they are doing, nobody cares. All right. Uh, I mean, if one did listen well, I thought my question she knows it very well. Though it's Magodo she's talking about, so <laughs> not that she knows the man very well. <laughs> but is it, do you think if anyone goes and gets some military training or paramilitary training, would it help improve our circumstances, our situation? Because we can't be forced to change our lives it's, for these it's, people. It's, 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 having military training is not going to help. And uh, if I tell you what I have in mind running through my head. Eh? You want to share some people, of them? People, people might think uh, I'm going crazy. Share, share some of them with us. It's just uh, liberalizing our arms uh, procurement. So you mean I can go to the open market to buy a gun? To carry arms. If they know I carry my arms, if, if I have my arms in my house, you cannot just come and dare Yeah, but that's part of the training. You need to train for some of those no, how no, to but use them. Before we need to get our laws for you to acquire arms, first of all, before you talk of training. You can't go and start training without... Uh, uh, having a that's like an American system. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Mm. 
All right, uh, we well, appreciate your coming on this morning, uh, uh, Mr. Michael Jaffa, the former uh, director with the SSS. Let's go over now and uh, get some comments from the police. They've got a lot to respond to. Mark, where?